Hi, it's XZP from DI of Music, and we are here three days after a great Halloween evening with Epica, Elevati, and Scar Symmetry. All bands were amazing, but it was Epica who was the biggest star of that night. Before attending the concerts, we had the great pleasure of talking to a very interesting and cool person. I'm Isaac from Epica, guitar player, and that's about it. Good. Uh, great. It's been, uh, we have had three shows now, and now it's the first one in Poland tonight, so it's good to be back. Pre-sales are good, and the venue looks nice. We had a good sound check, so I'm ready for it. A lot of booze. <laughs> yeah, like, no, actually, uh, I once toured with my previous band, uh, God Dethroned. I toured with Vader for six weeks. They're from Poland. And uh, it was good fun. You know, I still meet the crew or the guys. Sometimes on festivals, I get to see them. So that's great. And um, yeah, just uh, I, we always have a great time here. It seems like people in Poland, opposed to maybe where we come from, people are really enthusiastic. They uh, they're very yeah wild. The audience is really good. So that that's a good yeah that's a good change. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Oh yeah, well, uh, like I said, it's the first one now in uh, Poland, and the only one. So, um, like I said, pre-sales are really well. So I. It's going to be a packed venue and uh, just do a great show. We have a good production, uh, like special lights and all that. So we hope to give the Polish fans some, uh, yeah, we, that we deliver what we are supposed to deliver. Good music, good show, all that. And it's Halloween. Ho, ho, ho. this moment um, it's difficult to say because I mostly even if if people ask me what's your favorite song or what you know I I'm an album type of person you know I like a album and I think especially with Epica because you have like sometimes the ballad you have the really heavy songs you have more of the film score like sounds and uh, so I guess it's it's difficult to just pick one song, but maybe, maybe like uh, Chemical Insomnia from the latest album, or Kingdom of Heaven, which is a very long and epic song, has a lot of elements in it, like uh, the film's core part in the middle, then really heavy stuff. Uh, kind of progressive bridge and um, yeah so well, I'll stick to chemical insomnia maybe yeah um, biggest challenge actually the latest album quantum enigma was a kind of a well they're all a challenge because it's a it's not easy to record a, an album if so much stuff is going on, the whole orchestration, choirs, all that. But the latest album, we switched the team around it. We went to a different studio, different producer, different mixer, so the whole thing was new, which is uh, kind of scary in the beginning because you don't know if it's going to be good or um, if it's going to be better. That's what you hope. And it turned out like that, so we were very happy with the result. But uh, it was challenging at first. Oh, sorry about that. So um, yeah, I think that one was was uh, you know was really refreshing to um, to make that album. And I think it was also like uh, lately, it's I guess the first album we really wanted to do as a whole band and have a a process of like everyone being involved that uh, that hasn't been the case in the past not always and um 
So it was really good to do that, and we're already writing for the new album, doing the same process, so it looks good. Okay, uh, Second Stone. Um, basically, I wrote that song. Um, and it was just, uh, you know, the intro riff is like this technical guitar riff. And being a guitar player, I just wanted to have kind of, um, in the past, that didn't happen too much with a previous guitar player. And uh, like for every album, I try to write something which is kind of challenging on guitar. On the last album was uh, uh, that one, uh, Second Stone. On the album before that, I wrote uh, Deter the Tyrant, which has a like challenging part in the guitars. And also for the new album, I wrote some stuff like that. And um, there we go again. <laughs> Aryan from uh, Revamp dropping in. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that. I just. Um, wanted to have a song like that. It's basically having all the epica elements. It's the first song of the album, like aside from the intro. And, you know, uh, we always, like the first song of every album has like all the epica elements in it. Um, so that's how I tried to write it. Um, then Unchain Utopia also wrote that song. Was something I, um, it has a, a 7-8 beat, I don't know if that says anything to you, but it's like a, a beat which is not even. Okay, well, there there you go. So that, that was something in the chorus. I wanted it to be a little like that, you know, a little different than what you would usually have. And um, yeah, I think just the melodies are really good and uh, has a cool vibe. It works uh, very good live as well. Um, also, I guess it's Simone's uh, uh, most loved song on the album, so she likes to sing it as well. And um, yeah, so I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, and then the other one, uh, the Quantum Enigma. All right, that one was uh, written by Mark. And uh, yeah, as you say, it's like the second part of Kingdom of Heaven, so also a very elaborate, long song. Um, which also has all the uh, elements, also again the film score like stuff. And um, yeah, we, do, we don't, we, uh, for the release show, we played Kingdom of Heaven 1 and 2, so that was cool to have like the whole thing, but it's those two songs are so long, it's like 25 minutes if you play them all together, so unfortunately we're not always uh, able to play those two. Um, yeah, yeah, but you have to make decisions if you have so many albums and so many good songs. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but, you know, maybe someday it'll happen again. And um, I just like the fact that the, the, like, the whole concept of Kingdom of Heaven was, like, prolonged. And uh, who knows, maybe there's going to be a third part. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, the thing is, like, when we compose the music, we don't necessarily know already which direction the lyrics will go, but uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, aggressive song, so it kind of fit with that theme. And, uh, I mean, with uh, Anders Breivik, it hasn't been the first one who's done crazy stuff. You also have the shootings in, uh, like, uh, America. Um, so... You know, it's just, uh, it was politically, uh, you know, inspired politically, and that was maybe different from where people in America would just like uh, shoot people just to shoot people. I don't know. But um, so, yeah, um, I guess that was a little uh, different and, and a good way to kind of, you know, let the world know that we're not really okay with that. So, um, that's basically why the song or the lyrics were uh, written to that song. Ah, 
difficult question. Yeah, of course I would love to do so because I think it's a good challenge to do that. No problem. That was Aryan, drummer of Epica, joining us and leaving. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, obviously I would love to do it. I like, uh, for instance, like the Gladiator film tr uh, score is awesome. Um, Armageddon is really cool. Basically, whatever Hans Zimmer is coming up with is like Pirates of the Caribbean, stuff like that is really cool. Um, so yeah, you never know. We didn't get a new proposal for that, but maybe in the future it will uh, it will happen again. But I'd be up for it. Yeah, it's good to have like diversity and to try different things. And so why not bring it on, filmmakers? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so basically I was asked by Mark, who uh, it was like his uh, project together with uh, Jack Driesen and uh, Frank Schiphorst. Uh, so they just sat together with the three of them, they wrote the album, and then for live shows they just uh, needed a guitar player, and that's when he came to me and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll help you guys out. So uh, I wasn't really involved in the songwriting or any of that. And um, uh, yeah, I had a good time. We had a like, uh, we did a couple of shows in Holland. We did Grass Pop. We went on a South American tour, which was really fun. And then they started working uh, with the three of them on the second album. Uh, but by that time, you know, I was kind of really busy with Epica and like the business side and stuff like that. And uh, as it wasn't also for the second album, I didn't really write anything. It's, uh, you know, it was their project, so, um, and I was just like a guest guitar player. So I was like, you know, let's just uh, leave the ship, so to speak, and, and I'll do my stuff, and, uh, and they can find someone who is, uh, like, you know, uh, happy to do that. Not that I wasn't happy, but it was just like I had to make decisions whether, you know, to go for what, what I am really interested in. And uh, so that was it, yeah. Uh, design your universe. So basically you see the world upside down. Um, you see uh, like the, the, the air is like water and upside down. Um, and uh, yeah, the story uh, or the meaning of design your universe is like chase your dreams. Just uh, when you really want something, when you go for it, you work your ass off, all that, um, you get it done. And if you're honest to yourself and just have to write uh, means and all that, then uh, eventually you'll you'll get what you want, basically, and that's also basically what we do in the band we just uh, work for it and try to make uh, music as good as possible or how we think is good and uh, then just hope that people will like it and so far so good you know uh, and um, Requiem for the Indifferent is uh, you know you can look at it in the same perspective actually like if you stay indifferent nothing's gonna happen uh, if you don't care about anything, you know, nothing's going to change. If you want to change, I mean, these days it's really easy, like, for, for everyone to expose or to ventilate their opinions on Facebook and Twitter, all that. Everyone has an opinion and the whole world can read it and all that. Um, so if that's good or bad, I leave it in the middle. But, um, you know, you... If, if you are not happy with a certain situation, then just see how you can solve the thing instead of like saying, oh, this is crap or shit and I want it different, but you just sit in your couch and do nothing. Um, so that's what's behind it. And then the artwork is kind of the yin yang kind of thing. You have like the dark side, you have the light side. And, uh, and like this figure reaching out to the lighter side. Um, you also see like a key in a sort of tree. Um, 
so to kind of unlock yourself also that figure the dark side is machinery and all that and the tree is in the light so back to nature uh, get rid of all the cell phones and all that so um, lots of visitors today <laughs> and um, so uh, so that's basically what the artwork is representing uh, what else do we have quantum enigma is um, it's about quantum theory so it's really hard to explain that just in a couple of sentences but basically it means that everything and everyone is connected and from the moment you start changing something here something else will change and um, uh, so that's kind of the concept so if you only see the cover then um, you have kind of the island and there's lots of stuff underwater happening and you see little boats exploring what's underneath um, so it's like you only see the top of the mountain and you sometimes have no idea that there's a lot more behind it then again if you unfold the whole artwork which is inside the booklet then it seems like the whole um, that what you saw on the cover is even just a small part of something even bigger and uh, then you see like um, on the left part you see kind of a, the, the world as it was in the past with a little baby underneath the water then you see like a grown uh, person in the middle which is the cover and you see the skull like uh, degenerated uh, like dead people or if you look at it like that so it's like the beginning the now and like what what's gonna happen and it basically means that you just have to uh, live in the now. Um, some people are always thinking about, oh, in the past, this and that, and it kind of makes them feel a certain way in the now. Or they're too much like, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow, and I'm afraid about the future, or I don't know what's going to come. And that's, again, like a little message, like just live now and make the best out of your day every day. And uh, it doesn't matter what happened try to leave it learn from it but you know just take the good things with you and again don't worry too much about what tomorrow will bring because that's tomorrow and you can change it now so that's basically uh, the idea behind it Uh, well, if I write the music, I'm not thinking of any video yet. Um, then, because also what I said earlier, we don't really know yet what the lyrics will be about. If you, if I'm writing a song, I have no clue what it's going to be about. Uh, so once the lyrics are added, then you kind of can get an idea. And basically, the video is mostly about the message behind the lyrics. Um, so no if i write i don't have a vision i know how it should sound like but i don't know how it should look like um and then uh yeah i mean i think if you look at the history of the epica videos there's a, a positive progression you know in the past it was like really low budget and uh you know uh, yeah exactly and like uh, gothic metal stuff with uh, uh yeah the outfits which were suitable for that and uh yeah the latest i think uh, storm the sorrow has a really nice concept behind it um yeah we also uh, victims of contingency is is like yeah really cool video yeah well there you go and then you know lately with the new album we really tried for every song to uh, to do a video after show movie or just a uh, lyric video and just to make it interesting for people we also did a couple of live videos and um, yeah that that's just to give the fans something special something extra it's good fun for us and uh, it gets the band out there because MTV is dying and all these channels uh, so you need to have it on YouTube and get yourself out there Uh, irony of it all you kind of whenever you've done all the festivals then you're really happy to like for this tour I'm really happy to go back to the club shows 
And uh, if you've done a year of club shows, you're really happy to go on the festivals again. Um, like club shows mostly are, it's your own audience, you know, they come for you, they support you either way. Um, and with festivals, you're playing in front of a lot of people who maybe know about Epica, but you know, they don't know really the music. So you have to kind of make sure you're really doing a great job which is good um, and that makes like the club shows if you if you did, did a good job during the festivals then most likely more people will come to your club show the year after so uh, so both are nice and um, and I like the change you know like sometimes a club show then again the festival so awesome ciao Thank you.